Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you guys an overview of my landscape tool made in Houdini which you can use of course in Unity. To start, to start off with I'm going to import a base terrain, nothing too fancy, a terrain made in Houdini. As you can see there are no textures applied to it but that's not important for now. Now I'm going to import the terrain tool itself. Voila, it's important, but as you can see, there are no terrains in it. It needs an external terrain, as you can see here. But we are going to start with the base terrain here, and we're going to import it in the terrain uh, in the in this HDA here. To do that, we are going to need a terrain exporter. In the terrain exporter. I'm going to add the base terrain. Voila. And I'm going to set an output uh, path. I'm going to export it right here. And as you can see, I'm going to, I name it terrain.bgo. Important that the last thing is .bgo. I'm going to save and replace it. It didn't catch it. Maybe I gotta try again. Voila, now it got it. I'm going to save it. Okay, and I'm going to hide these guys, the terrain exporter and the base tree. Now I'm going to back I'm going back to the terrain tool itself. I'm going to import the exported terrain. And as you can see, there are textures applied to it. You can see, if you can see it, there is an output system here. Uh, here is the fastest way because uh, the adjusted terrain, so we can iterate a lot uh, very fast. A slim terrain and of course the eroded terrain, but that takes a while to generate. So the fastest is not slumping it for now. Um, we can add some adjustments here uh, in HD. I'm going to add a slot and I'm going to import a terrain adjuster here. You can see it's displayed in red. It means that it's not being updated yet, but we can change that here and being updated and it changed to a blue color. It's a good visualizer um, but we need to import that here if we want it to work and voila as you can see it's generated some terrain very fast here and we can change those parameters here now it's a box but we can set it to a curve that it follows a curve or a neck in a mesh or a curved mesh, um, a mesh generated by the shape of a curve, and we can change these, uh, this sort kind of noise. Here we can change all the parameters of the noise. Let's say I want, I want it, I don't want it to be 50 high, but like 25. Enter, and maybe not. like that uh, maybe um, a bit of distortion like 25 like that and you can see we generated some custom terrain very quickly you can also enable the mask to generate a custom mask uh, let's say I'm going to add 40 here uh, Maybe gonna ah uh, gonna change the terrain uh, noise amplitude like by two, three. Let's say four. As you can see, this is a pretty custom terrain generated very quickly. Gonna set the roughness a bit lower or higher. As you can see, it's it's just iterating through the values. 
voila this is the first one we can add some more if you want to let's say i'm gonna add another one uh, load hj file train exporter and oh oh shit. uh that's the wrong one uh a terrain adjuster sorry for that over there let's put it over here and let's add it to the geo terrain here let's add another one set it to an hda add a slot and add the extra terrain voila and now let's update it voila you can see if I want to update it or not let's say I want it over there just to refresh it and it's over there but the cool thing here is if I set it here it's now this this mask here is fully replaced but if I want to add it to the existing it's something like that pretty cool you can combine some masks uh, let's say I would something cooler than that uh, voila pretty custom terrain generated very fast without even painting let's try another terrain adjuster just to show what it can do. Um, terrain adjuster. Voila. But I'm not wanted to be a box right now. Let's say I want it to be a curved mesh. And it needs a curve, of course. Let's say I'm gonna turn this off and add an input uh, a curve asset but let's say voila I want it like that add it I'm gonna add it to the terrain adjuster like that set this to zero and here you can see it's not being updated yet set some distance like 50 gonna pull it down like that so it overlaps the existing terrain and I'm going to update it over here ah we need to add it uh, forgot it so I'm going to add an HDA to the terrain adjuster like that. Well, as you can see, it follows the shape of it. Maybe it's more clear if I lower the blur, the mask Maybe like that. It's more obvious that it follows the shape maybe distort it a bit like that and then apply a mask to it and it generates some random terrain here with a mask that's maybe a bit a bit too high Let's like that. But if I don't want it, I can just turn it off like that. Do it like this. Lower the distort. And I can blur it if I want to. Some more. As you can see, uh, you can do a lot of things with it. Just playing with the parameters 
but the cool thing now is I can st I can still paint on the terrain if I want to uh, using the terrain tool of unity itself let's say I'm going to paint a mountain here and the only thing I need to do is export it so what I do is select unity mesh add slot and add this save it to disk and if I reload the geometry you can see the sculpted terrain is here pretty cool but as you can see, this is not what we wanted. That's because the terrain adjusters are still being updated. So if we turn them off, they're, they will be like they were before we exported it. Just the last one. Just turn it off. These colors are very handy. Like that. As you can see, it is updated. Sculpting and using the train tool. You can still turn it off like that. To see it more clearly. And that's what is it.